All right, so welcome back. This is video number four, Dig Deeper. So once you have solidified your idea, let's dig deeper. And what I mean by that is trying to actually analyze, break it down, start writing things down and start brainstorming because we've already done the research process. But this is usually when people go out and hire a programmer and they say, hey, I really like this plugin and they approach a programmer and say, can you clone this plugin? Now, I caution you and I say, don't do this. That's a big mistake. And this is something that a lot of us do. I did it at one time. I've had uh, seen a lot of people do this before and it just creates a lot of heartache, lots of loss of money and loss of time because what you end up doing is you hand this idea to somebody else who has a different idea. So it's kind of like the telephone game where somebody tells you something and then you tell somebody something and then somebody else tells something something. So their idea of what you just said has nothing to do with what you're thinking. So you want to make sure that you have a clear cut project specification that says this is exactly what I want and then they go and program it. All right. So that's the reason why I'm putting you through this process. So like I said, never, I repeat, never ask a programmer to clone another plugin. Make sure that you have dug deeper and figured out what exactly your plugin does. And it's okay. You want to figure out what the plugin should do, what your competitors aren't doing, and then making it better. So we talked briefly about this in the previous videos, but I really want to drive it home and I really want you to put it on paper. So that's why I am repeating a few things. So the goal in this video is to merely figure out what the major problem is. List out the problem, list out the solutions that are there for the problem and that solve the problem. Is there a manual process that can be automated? Is there a tedious process within this problem? Because that's a good indication on whether or not this is going to be a successful WordPress plugin or not. Successful meaning whether it can be developed or not. And I'll actually show you an example. I'll break it down so that you can actually see what that looks like. We're not just going to talk theory and concepts here and fundamentals. We're actually going to take an idea. I'm going to list it out, list out the problem and so that you can see the exact process and that you should be able to follow along. Now, another thing is, is there a process? And if there is, this is great because then you know you can automate or speed up the process by using a WordPress plugin. So let's dig deeper and let's look at an example. Okay, so homework time. <laughs> what you need to do is you need to pull out a WordPad or uh, your favorite word processor and then simply type these out. So number one, list out the problem. Number two, what is the manual process? Number three, how annoying is this process? And number four, what does this process make you lose? Number five, what does this process make you want to do right now? Does it want to make you pull out your hair? Number six, list out possible solutions. So possible meaning different solutions. List out how these solutions would make you better for number seven, make it happier and make you gain something. So what I'm pushing you through is you're going through what the consumer is thinking. All right. So list out the problems. Let's think about some problems that we actually looked at. If you remember in the previous videos, we found that a lot of people were frustrated with creating fresh content. So creating fresh content on an ongoing basis. So that was one of the major frustrations in relation to the frustrations with the website. Remember now, what is the manual process? Well, there are many different ways of going about this. So manual process is obviously creating content from scratch. Now, what goes into that content creating from scratch? 
And I want you to list out everything that you can think of. So in this case, the manual process is finding maybe keywords that people are looking for. So maybe finding topics. So that would go under finding topics. And then when you're finding topics, finding keywords that people are looking for, and then finding or writing articles. And before that, okay, so finding topics, let's see here, finding keywords that people are looking for. How to write the article maybe. And not just finding keywords, but maybe finding key points within that specific content piece. How to write the article, you know, writing it well, you know, grammar. It's just, and as we can see, it's very time consuming. Finding topics, and not just finding topics, but finding topics that are hot or in demand. Now, as we go through this process, what are you noticing right now? I'm noticing that a lot of it is actually the process of finding topics, finding keywords, finding key points. That process seems to be the most tedious process. So this, by doing this, this allows you to see where the frustration point is. So it's not necessarily writing the article. Writing the article might be easier because you can always outsource that and you can find somebody to write the article, but finding the topics, finding the keywords, finding the key points, making sure that article is actually interesting, that seems to be the hardest part. So what if we created a plugin that would go out and find content that is hot demand and all that? All right, so Let's move through here. How annoying is this process? Very time consuming. If you think about just through that one process, doing all that research and all that can take hours. So what does this process make you lose? I lose hours that could be spent on other things. And that's just one article, very time consuming, take hours. What does this process make you want to go do right now? Um, it's very frustrating, I can see, because creating, you know, if, if I have to do this on and on and on, it's a very, very tedious process. So I think in my brain, if I had a plugin that would allow me to find content, Maybe not necessarily the topics and all that, but maybe find hot topics, but maybe help me find hot content. And let's see, what does this process make you want to do right now? So makes me want to scream or walk away from the computer and go do something else. All right. So obviously... Different people is going to be different, but you're thinking about your prospect too. It probably makes them want to scream. It probably wants makes them want to walk away and go do something else. And that's not productive. So what are kind of possible solutions that we can take? So possible solutions are that they have a WordPress plugin that creates or finds hot topics, keywords, key points. And the question is, how are we going to create the content? Well, there are several different ways in creating content. You can either con do content creation, which basically means getting topics and actual content from somebody else and posting it on your site. 
and maybe responding to that content. So that's content creation. Or you can create content from scratch. Now, like we saw earlier, the tedious process seems to be this right here because you can always hire somebody to create the content as long as you have this information. Or you can have a system that will find hot topics and hot keywords and key points and all that and curate the content. Now, we need to figure out what do we do want to do? And you have to be very, very specific as much as possible. Remember, the plugin that we saw earlier was a plugin at Envato code canon.net. It was a plugin that basically allowed you to create articles. So create content from scratch. So you could do that or you could just do content curation. Now, if you create content from scratch, obviously that's going to be very, very tedious. I'm going to tell you right now that unless you're a very highly technical person uh, and you're, and if you're a newbie, especially or intermediate, this is going to be very hard to do. So what you might want to do is you might even want to go further and go on freelancing sites and pay somebody to consult with. So pay a programmer to consult with to try to figure out how hard potentially would it be to do this or do this. So let's do content curation. And I think content curation is super hot. That's what a lot of people are doing. And not just everyone is doing it, but it works. People on Facebook pages, you see every day, most Facebook fan pages, what they're doing is content curation. They're pulling in memes, pictures, or even blogs or sites that are not theirs, but they're sharing it. That's content curation. So let's maybe develop a WordPress plugin that finds hot topics, keywords, key points, and content curation. So finds, in this case, finds hot content that is curated from other people's sites. All right. So list out how these solutions would make your life better. If you had a WordPress plugin that would allow you to go out, find hot content, not just any content, but hot content that is curated from other people's sites. How would make that make you feel? I would save lots of hours of time make me happier, gain confidence to focus on my WordPress blog or site. Okay, so essentially what you've just done right now is you figured out what the pain points are. So you can use this later on to create the marketing material for your product. But while doing so, we figured out creating fresh, fresh content is on an ongoing basis is the major problem. And then the possible solution is this one here. So this is actually what you really want. So we're going to bold that right here. And I'm going to copy this down here. So the problem and the solution, that's all we want. So the problems here and the solutions here. So creating the fresh content on an ongoing basis, our solution is to find hot content that is curated from other people's sites. So in the next video, when we dig even further and we actually create a list, we want to break this down. All right. So that's it. Let's move on to the next video.